few people asked me about doing live sets. I've been kind of building on this and adjusting it and deciding what I was going to use for quite a few years. And this is, for a long time now, this has been the, uh, the setup. Uh, I've taught you through <clears throat> everything and what it does. So I've got, obviously, one computer running Ableton, which has got the main bodies of the tracks. Each channel is a different song, basically. So there's this song of mine, Angel Echoes. So I usually take all the songs and break them up. I've got the drum intro, which you can see is just like the intro bit of the song, just looped. So this is the outro to the track, just on a loop as well. Um, this is one of the main kind of melodic lines through it, just looped. Just various bits and pieces that I might want to use. Hidden away on Ableton, down here, I've got a bunch of stuff that uh, is all set up to be triggered by the monome. Like monome, I just use as a straight ahead MIDI trigger, like each button on here launches clips. But I have it set up on another channel. And so there's things like, you know, just kind of drum loops and things. And it's designed that you can, you can press any button and everything will work, you know. Apart from these top four rows that I've got set up, uh, like a step sequencer, which I'm just using, just using the like follow function on the, on the triggers on Ableton. So plays a sample, moves to the next one, and that allows me to like, you know, break up bits of uh, drum beats and things. There's this one sound, this is like film in a reel to reel thing. Like I've got a few things like this that I just need for like bed of sound. What's that one? That's all these weird little samples. I can always mix it with whatever's going on the other track and make some like kind of start doing relatively rhythmically interesting, interesting things. Then right over here, if everybody can see, I've got this thing which is called a sound bytes auto loop module. All it does is make loops. It does nothing else at all. And what you do is you send the signal from the headphone socket on the mixer and whatever goes into this, it works out the BPM. And you just, um, you know, it just makes loops of whatever you're sending it. And you can see they're phasing very little bit, like, I think it's, and which is actually a beautiful thing about it. It's not perfect, like it's not, it gives the whole thing a kind of sense of movement, like makes it, all these things to make it feel a little more, like more alive, you know, like slightly more elements of risk. It's got like a jog wheel on it, like a, so you can totally change the position of it. So this is all just from this, all we're hearing now is this box. Also with the DJ mixer, you instantly get some effects and things. So, so I might make a nice loop in with this, but I've still got my original shit. That's just coming from this, you know, and then doing combinations of the two things. And I've still got my shit going on here as well. So I've got three channels, three channels of stuff to play around with. Finally, last thing is the third channel. I've got this set up. So I have this program called Cool Edit, one of the greatest pieces of software ever made. So with all the tracks on this computer, on Cool Edit, I've got melodic parts like this. The wonderful thing about Cool Edit is you just click on any bit with a mouse, it just starts looping that section. And um, if you click ridiculously fast, you get all that kind of like finesse, Mego records type of wicked like kind of electronic stuff without running any max patch or any shit like that. You're just clicking as fast as you possibly can on the screen. <laughs> and um, I've got it running into this thing as well. And the reason I'm carrying this box around almost is because it's got this button on it where you can put an input and whenever you press the button it plays what's coming through the input. And you can put an effect on it like tape delay. So now we've got this. I can do stuff with it, you know? I really like this because it's not a plug-in, it's not a synthesizer, it's not an instrument or anything, it is, but it's like so live, you know, it's never ever going to be remotely the same at any any show and it allows me to mess with the uh, melodies and stuff. And then on the other, 
I've got my drum stuff here. So over here, I've just triggered the version of the whole song without drums. You know? So at the show, I might have been noodling around like this for a few minutes, kind of getting the atmosphere I want in the room. And then people will recognize like a bit of the, they'll recognize melodies and things maybe from the song off the record. But now the real kick is gonna come is the actual main hooks and stuff from the song are gonna come in with everything. And then, and this is the moment, you know, everybody in the room is like, oh shit, yeah. You know, it's totally like, you know, everyone's cheering, it's all turning around. And I've got total control, like, I've got total control of that moment, you know, and I'm able to like hold off, I think, during this set, I do lots and lots of tension building, like playing with all these elements, holding it off for a long time, suddenly dropping the main element I know people know. So people know this tune, it was like the opening track on my last record, so they're familiar with it, but they're hearing a version that's totally unlike anything on the record. I might be playing at like a really mellow venue where everybody's like chilling out like this, and I might do it more kind of atmospheric, but I've got everything set up here, so. I've got like a 4-4 kick and all that, everything's there. So if I need to start dropping all these things and making it more clubby, all those, uh, all those elements are kind of in place. I don't know much about Ableton at all and the sorts of things it can do. There's probably like a million functions in there that do the sorts of things I want to do. But I'm very, very wary of them because I wanna, don't want to sound like anybody else. So some people say to me like, you know, oh, you should have big, more of a high-end sound card and I just run out of the headphone socket on here and all this sort of stuff. And um, I think in terms of the audio in a big club, just separating things a little bit and having a few channels on, on the mixer, that makes a really, that makes a bigger impact. You know, like it's definitely, it sounds really, really nice to not just have everything coming from one source. Mm -hmm.